All right, trying to make trying to make slightly better procedural water solutions. Or you know, like like a flooded place. <laughs> okay, so I have like six tutorials I've been I've been working on on and off, but for some reason I'm uh, jumping over into trying to do trying to do waves. Um, so when you're when you're trying to represent something, whether it's with like CG or painting or drawing or something like that, there can be a very large gap between having something that is not distractingly bad and something that actually holds up to scrutiny. And a lot of times, like that, that's that's great. If you're working on a shot and nobody looks at a thing and thinks, "Hey, that's that's bad. That's enough." Uh, it doesn't register on their radar. It just reads as kind of the thing. But if you actually stop and look at it, you know, it's it's no good at all. And I feel like a lot of the water in the first Dynamo Dream episode is kind of in that in that camp of reading as water. You know, if you, if you look at it, but not really looking like how water actually looks. And the next episode I'm working on has a lot of water and boats and stuff in it. So I want to figure out how to make some some more complex water that actually holds up to scrutiny. Uh, and I've been trying to make a project out of it, but it's tricky because water is fantastically complex. Like, I, I was thinking, okay, maybe I'll go down with a ruler and I'll measure the, the distance between waves because I suspect that water kind of averages out to a certain peak distance. Um, it turns out that's not true at all. I was even Googling, like, what what's the average distance between peaks? And they're like, well, there's different types of waves. There's, uh, you know, microwaves, there's bigger wave the waves, and there's this waves, and there's this waves, and there's all the way up to, like, giant, you know, tsunami waves. Um, which sounds more to me as if there's just one large, uninterrupted spectrum of waves, uh, which we've we've labeled, labeled subsets of. Like, this is mostly what I'm trying to emulate with, with my current uh, methods, where you have this sort of just soft, undulating water of the wave distance of about of about this far but even looking here you can see there's an area of roughness back here mixed with the smoothness you can see there's other waves you know moving through as everything else is kind of just like balancing around trying to find the, the lowest the lowest area I filmed a bunch of reference yesterday and what was surprising was just how often these different systems would just push right up next to each other uh, admittedly I was in a marina right now and so you know there's a lot of things blocking wind from blowing through but also the prevalence of uh, of the foam and stuff was more than I expected Again, large waves with mid-sized waves with these micro waves kind of going going on top of there. Okay, when you compare the these waves here to the uh, the walkway, you can see it's like a very brisk walk, maybe even almost a jog speed that they're moving through here. Uh, the the longer the wavelength of the wave, the faster it can move through uh, the surface. And then you have these areas of like upswell where water can can be pushing up and that actually smooths out the entire thing. You can see it's raising up, and in places it's almost like pushing up and then folding in on itself as the water's kind of just do go doing this large circular motion. And I'm starting with all of this because if you're going to try to replicate something at all realistically, you have to be fairly familiar with what it actually looks like in real life. And the thing that became super obvious is just that water changes a lot based off of context, obviously, off of, off of wind and depth and speed. And, uh, and if anything's, you know, blocking it and in uh, and, and current. And so there isn't just a, a one-size-fits-all solution to, hey, what does water look like? I like this, where there's the roughness, and then you just get this glossy area. And that can be because either it's protected from the wind, or sometimes a boat has passed over it recently, and reset all the ripples, or I, I don't know what it's doing from like a fluid dynamic standpoint. And after uh, some messing around, this is what I came up with. I've got, yeah, I've got some dynamic paint going on. If you don't, if you don't know about that, that's going to be very exciting. Um, but yeah, bits of bits of foam. I've got, you know, the, the microwaves, the medium waves, the uh, these kind of large waves pushing through in some areas where kind of looks like maybe the water could be pushed up a little bit. And so I figured I'd just go through and share share what I learned. Uh, so let's let's just start over. Cool. So I'm just going to make a, a new plane here. Let's make it uh, 20 meters square and to give it a new material uh, we'll call it good water uh, I'm gonna make it glossy with zero roughness and now we just have a nice perfectly calm thing of water and if that's what you want you're done but uh, but if you don't let's start getting a little bit more complicated so I've I've made tutorials about water before and um, as <laughs> As with most things on my Patreon, this is just me saying, don't do it like that. So I used to say, create a, uh, a Musgrave texture, plug it into the uh, the normal, which will make it weird for a second until we clarify this is a bump map. Plug it into the height here, and you can scale it up, maybe turn the uh, the distance down to like 0.2 or you know tweak the strength here. And this already, 
looks very similar to, to what I just spent a day trying to figure out. Um, but it does have some limitations. Like first, you know, it's, it's perfectly, uh, it's perfectly just consistent across the entire thing. And so a, a Musgrave texture is a 3D texture. It exists in 3D space. And this is kind of just a representation of a cross section of that texture. And if we move it up and down here, I'm going to add a mapping and a texture coordinate node here. And if we uh, and if we change the location on the Z axis, we're seeing different parts of that cross section and undulates like water. And uh, and we can animate that here. Let's uh, hover over here and hit I to add a keyframe. And let's go later and we'll shift it just a little bit and hit I again to add another keyframe. If you have both the node and the object selected, you can see the keyframes down here. And if we have uh, hit Shift E, we can say linear extrapolation, and it'll just keep doing this forever. Um, so I might make it a little faster. But as I would look at this, I always got this feeling that it was kind of undulating, like whoom, 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 whoom. And that's been that's been that feeling I've gotten in all all of the shots I've done. Can you kind of feel it? And I mentioned this to Nathan Vegdahl, like, am, am I nuts? And he said no, and he immediately pulled out a sketchbook and started explaining that the way that noise is made is it's it's kind of like it just starts with a grid and it picks a random value for each you know point on this grid and then it'll subdivide those that grid and give those a random value and just kind of do that further and further down that this is a, a very much an oversimplification and Nathan explained it way better than that but effectively it's all based around a grid and so what you're seeing here is just the harmonics of that grid kind of like woo, woo, passing passing through and so I thought okay well if that's if that's the issue then we can just offset the grid so I'm rotating it just a, just a bit here. And so instead of all of those points hitting through at the same time, they're kind of sliding through like that. And sure enough, uh, not only does it now look as if there's a little bit of a current, but we don't have that zoom, zoom, zoom feeling anymore, which is, which is really nice. Uh, so even just right here, this feels, this feels a lot better to me. And here, added a little guy for, for scale. But, uh, but yeah, one of the things that really makes a body of water look vast is when you can see like the air systems and stuff moving across it. Like very rarely is water totally uniform. And uh, I really wanted to figure out how to replicate those, those patches. And it's actually, it's very easy. Uh, here, let's add just a noise texture here. And plug that into the roughness. And you can see the whole thing is too rough, but if we add a, a color ramp node in the middle here, and bl the black areas are totally uh, smooth, so if we pull that up a bit so it's not everywhere, and maybe change the white so it's not 100% rough, we'll just kind of do that. Now we have some nice areas of, you can, you can just see it right there. It's just, it's a little bit of randomization that really seems to help, uh, especially if you see it on a really large scale. Like here's a, here's a half kilometer version, and you can see just those rough bits as they go off into the distance really do add, add a lot. I also love how you can turn the bump way down or you can turn the strength way up and it still always kind of looks right. Um, anyways, okay, so Musgrave texture still works pretty darn good for, for the small waves. But I want to get I want to get some, some more interesting water movement in there. And so that's where, uh, hey, what if we use the wave texture? And you're like, Ian, using a, a wave texture for waves? I'm so glad I joined this Patreon. Yeah. Uh, here, I'm going to scoot this stuff over. And I just want to mix the wave texture with the musgrave before it goes into the bump. Actually, let's just play around with the uh, the straight wave texture first. I'm going to just drag it over into the height. One thing I will say is the wave texture seems to be fairly computationally heavy. Once it's built the shader, it's it's fairly quick, but uh, but the building time can take can take a minute. Um, Okay, and look at that. It's doing it's doing just as advertised. It's it's a wave, and we can do our, our usual thing here. Here, I'm going to add a keyframe to the, the phase offset. Animates the whole thing, so let's add a keyframe. Let's go over. Let's add a, another keyframe here. Select the water. Select the node. Shift-E, linear extrapolation. And here, let's actually... Yeah, it looks about right. Remember, I want, I want these waves to be the ones that are about kind of like walking or jogging speed. Cool. All right, that's that's looking good. So right now they're very they're very parallel, but we can start to play with the distortion here, and we start to get some of those areas that almost look like the upswells, where the water's kind of like pushing up. I think that's that's very interesting, especially if you start to play with the scale. 
it starts to look as if you have areas where the water is you know, coming out and where it's kind of sucking back down under, which is really cool. This is very much the type of look that uh, I was excited about when I was shooting the reference. Yeah, let's actually let's scale it back down a bit so we get kind of larger areas of that. And this is just, this is a lot more interesting to me. Here, let's turn the distortion back down a little bit and see if we can get some of those swells, but also just the overall movement of the water passing through. Um, and all of these give you different, different, different effects. Um, but the one thing it doesn't do particularly well, especially if you start to crank up the detail here, you'll see that the, uh, the waves stay fairly static. You start to see that there's a layer moving through some kind of static smaller waves. And that's where mixing this with the Musgrave seems to make a lot of sense to me. So, and I'm a, I literally have this entire video uploaded, like embedded, I have the Patreon post made and everything, but I'm, I'm redoing it just because I'm, I'm kicking myself because I'm like, oh, but the detail bit doesn't animate, so you have to combine it with the Musgrave texture. It totally just animate the vector the exact same way you do with the Musgrave and it still animates perfectly. In fact, it looks even better. Here, we can just turn the, turn the detail up and it's, that's just great which means uh, this tutorial is not as much of a, like, hey, let's mix and match. Uh, the scale now, you know, is a, is a little bit off here. Uh, this looks like kind of a larger ocean, and this man looks huge, but you can you could, you could tweak stuff and, and fix that. Um, the scale actually works really good. But yeah, that means this tutorial is less, hey, let's mix and match some stuff and come up with a cool ocean, and more just like, hey, let's use the wave texture to make waves in the way it was obviously very well designed to do. But uh, hopefully, hopefully there's still some useful stuff in here. Um, this is, this this is really nice. And if we want to start getting wacky, we could mix in another instance of the wave texture, but scaled way down. And here, look at this. Now that we have this wave texture thing going on, it takes a while to build the texture every time we change anything. But let's let's plug this into uh, the mix. And instead of having it be an overall mix, I want to make it localized. I want there to be areas where we're using this one wave texture and areas where we're using the other one. So I'm going to, uh, well here, first let's just change this mix so all we're seeing is this new wave texture. I want to make it uh, fairly tiny. I want to turn the distortion way down so they're mostly just straight here because I want to get those little micro rivulet things. Uh, turn the distortion up just a, just a tad. Turn down the detail. Yeah, and let's just mix these in in certain areas. So I'm going to add a, a Musgrave texture here. And I'm going to use that to uh, mix the factor. And what's effectively happening right now is if, if you're not familiar with nodes, uh, here it's building it again. Again, once you start adding wave textures, it goes it goes slow. Um, yeah, look at that. We've got it in certain areas. Um, I'm gonna Control Shift click on the Musgrave texture, and you can see this is what the Musgrave texture looks like. It's just black and white. And when we plug that into the mix factor down here, um, the white areas are gonna be you know the original texture, and the black areas will show this new wave texture. Here we got Control Shift click to reset it here. And one thing you'll notice is these high density rivulet areas actually do the exact same thing as the as controlling the roughness of the glossy that we just that we just did. That's effectively what controlling the roughness was was simulating. Was all those tiny little microwaves? I keep saying microwaves, and it sounds wrong. Um, but those those tiny waves that when you see them from a distance are so chaotic that they just reads as kind of a more a more diffused surface. Uh, I'm gonna take the Musgrave that we're using as the mix factor and I'm gonna plug it through a color ramp here and I'm gonna change those values. And so so the white where it's 100% rivulet, I'm just gonna turn that down and just kind of fade it in just a little bit. So we have areas of those high density waves, but, but not, eh, maybe a bit more than that, but it's not everywhere, yeah. Oh, and of course I have to do our usual keyframe thing, you know, down here to animate these waves. That's looking nice, and you can see we're, we're effectively just layering all these different waves. We have our big waves, we have our average waves, and then we have these little micro, these micro waves. Let's add some foam! Here, alright, we'll go to the very end here. Instead of glossy being the only shader, I'm going to add a diffuse shader here. We'll just keep it, keep it white, and mix them together. And just like we did with the, uh, the Musgrave texture before, I'm going to create a noise texture here, and use that to control the mix factor. And you can't really see what's happening until you start to change the scale here. And actually, I'm going to make the glossy water, I'm going to make it not perfectly reflective. I'm going to darken it a tad. Cool. And uh, I'm going to run the noise texture through a color ramp here so I can just keep the very, very whitest bits. Which in this case, I think means moving this down until it's almost all in the black area. But yeah, now we get these nice little, these nice little areas. And if we turn up the, the detail a little bit, you can see it actually looks kind of like bubbles. And if we turn up the distortion, 
uh, we can get some longer ones that look as if they're actually kind of like been left in the wake of a, of a ship and they've been kind of stretched. I, I like all of that a lot. And of course, we can run it through a mapping node and add a couple keyframes for the foam. Same thing as, as usual here. Whoa, that's too fast here. We'll, we'll swap them and make it go the right way. Here, we'll slow that way, way down. And now looking at this, I'm, I'm gonna go back to the very first Musgrave we made and just turn up the detail just a little bit. And that'll subdivide, that'll ma add more subdivision points between you know the main, the main noise generators. Just give it, eh, that's a bit too much, but maybe let's go down to like four, just to give everything a little bit more, more wave resolution. But okay, now how do we get this cube to interact with the water? Uh, a lot of you probably know this already, but if you don't, um, this, is one of my, this is one of those features that appeared in Blender and you just kind of looked at it like, wait, we can, we can do that? Uh, but it's called dynamic paint. And usually that's so that an object can touch another object and leave like a mark. Like if you had a tires leaving a skid on a road or something, it's a way to say, hey, wherever this one object intersects this other one, save that as a texture map. But it has this other feature to it called waves. And we'll set that up right now. Under the physics tab, we're gonna check dynamic paint and we're gonna make the water, the canvas, at it and it's like do you want it to be a paint canvas no we want it to be waves and uh, now we select the cube and this one's already set up but here I'll delete it uh, we set it to brush say add a brush and, and now it will do nothing well it tries to do a little bit here um, but that's because it uses the objects resolution so and this right now only has four vertices so I'm just gonna subdivide this like crazy here maybe even one more is that nuts uh, now, look at that, we're adding, we're adding waves. And if we, uh, you can see it's kind of square, it's kind of a low res ripple. If we right click shade smooth, I think that will fix all of that. Yeah. And if this is wrong, if you've modeled it all to scale, I think this is actually a pr fairly appropriate speed physics wise, but you can also change the, the speed and the damping and all of that um, down here if you want. So I did try one thing, which was, selecting this outer edge here and extruding it out so you could have a place where the ripples were working in the middle Woo! <laughs> where you'd have a place where you know like a boat can interact while still having the water go to the horizon and it didn't it did this it doesn't really want to work out for that and so i'm, I'm still trying to figure that out i'm going to darken the the glossy water a little bit to show you something uh one thing this does do is wherever the ripples are it messes with the foam you can see the foam noise here is going crazy and that's because this is actually displacing the surface of the water through that that noise texture we use to generate the foam and so we can go into that foam texture here and I'm gonna scale it on the z-axis to be zero and that means effectively it's stretched infinitely in either direction so no matter how far up or down the water goes it should still be intersecting the same bit of noise there which is which is kind of nice but yeah so this is this is kind of where where i'm at right now what i really want to do is i want to have a full-on complex you know ship's wake because there's always that it's a very interesting shape and there's particles and i want to use video textures but i also want it to be able to blend seamlessly into the rest of this and just have all of it work together so you can actually look at the boat's wake and and, and it holds up. Uh, I've been looking at other movies to see how they do it, and there's a lot of different ways that, that they, a lot of them do use video textures and just kind of hope you don't look too close, but um, I want to figure out a good solution if I can, because there's going to be a lot of boats, so I will, uh, I'll let you know if I figure figure anything out. But yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of other tutorials that I'm, I'm excited to put out here, but it was kind of nice, it's always nice to play around with procedural stuff, uh, even if it's not the most complex. Uh, anyways, hope this was useful. I will I will talk to you soon. Oh, and also, if you want to use the dynamic paint in uh, a rendered animation, you have to you have to bake it. So just under the dynamic paint settings down here at the bottom under cache, well, make sure you know the frame range is correct, and then just hit bake, and it'll bake your current thing. And one last thing I've kind of noticed in myself. Uh, when water reaches a certain distance, it does just kind of read as noise. It reads as an aliasing issue. It's just too too hyper dense. And we know from rendering in CG that this this looks like a rendering artifact. We don't like that. And so I've found that I tend to make my waves. I, I err on 
having not quite enough of those small dense waves because I'm trying to avoid specifically this this look. Especially in Eevee, you start to get like this pixelation. It all goes away in the final render, or uh, you know, if you render with cycles. But especially in the preview, I'm like, oh, I want to, I want to avoid that, and so I don't make my waves totally complex enough sometimes. And I, I think that's just the thing I have to keep in mind. <laughs> and just to try it out, I tried putting it inside of a, a photo scan thing, and it works. It works pretty good for being a, a really quick effect. Obviously, some, some garbage, and honestly, a proper fluid sim, and more work with the uh, dynamic paint, even to like set up these boundaries here, could do could do a lot. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad that like you can get results like this so so quick. This is this is kind of interesting. Um, anyways, I'll let you guys go. I'll talk to you soon, and uh, have a good one.